If you like to make your NFL games a little bit more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank goodness for those guys. Please, 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 and gals, I should say. Please go to DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the code ROSS. They've got deals for new users. They've got deals for existing users. But you got to put the code in ROSS to get them. And that way they know that I sent you. We've got a lot to get to today. Steve's got some NBA thoughts. He's got some WNBA thoughts. But this is one of the most important episodes we do. Because Steve has a lot of schedule release thoughts. And how to bet on the schedule release. Now, interestingly, we don't know exactly when the schedule will be released. There are people speculating that it will be Thursday. Of course, we record this show on Tuesdays in the morning. So it's Tuesday, May 7th. I do three Ross Tucker football podcasts every week here in the offseason. So Greg Cosell gave out his favorite guys from the draft, non-first rounders on yesterday's Ross Tucker football podcast. We're talking about the impact of these rookie draft choices for fantasy football, as well as best ball, as well as prop betting on the Fantasy Feast podcast. We're certainly going through each player pick by pick by division on the college draft podcast. So there's plenty of content all revolved around the glorious sport That is football, but we want to make sure you are prepared ahead of time. As I say in any speech or presentation I ever give, the separation is in the preparation. So we're getting you prepared for everything you need to know when the schedule comes out. If it doesn't come out this Thursday, it's coming out next week, probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So we will get you ready by we. I primarily mean he, Steve Fezzik, the only two-time winner of the Super Bowl professional football gambling, the Super Contest out there in Vegas. You can follow him on social media like I do, at Fezzik Sports, an excellent, excellent social media follow. He pulls no punches. He just says what he thinks, often hilarious, at Fezzik Sports. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL on pretty much every platform out there. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. Highly encourage you guys to check us out on any of the social platforms. As well, by the way, (coughs) watching us on YouTube. More and more people every week check us out. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Steve, before we get to the NFL schedule release or your NBA uh, and WNBA thoughts, I did want to ask, since it was this past weekend, And it was very exciting. We forgot last week to touch on the Kentucky Derby at all. I don't remember what we talked about last week. What was last week? You had your your week one South American game of the year. Trying to remember what else we talked about. Yeah, we went under uh, 50 Philly, um, Green Bay, and blink a few hours later, and it's 48 and a half, which goes to show the value of getting down on the best number. Why make a bet, Ross, now and tie up your money for four months? There's one and one reason only to lock in numbers that will not be there the rest of our lives. Love it. Um, that's, that's, that's what we do. That's what we love to do here. We also obviously talked about the draft and the impact of the draft on uh, some of our bets for this season. Steve liked The Bears over eight and a half was one other bet that we discussed. You don't bet much on horse racing, correct, Steve? Because it's very hard to win, right? I don't. You know, I was explaining to my son. He loves this example. So I think it was last year in the Kentucky Derby. Could have been the year before where there were 20 horses in the race. And there were numerous podcasts picking the exactas, the trifectas, the winner of the race. And then what happened is there was a late addition and there was a 21 horse and he wound up winning. 
So if you listen to every podcast and every expert all week long, and there are a hundred of them that gave out selections, you went, oh, and a hundred because you, they could not have picked the winner because the winner was not available until Saturday uh, or Friday afternoon. Um, and my, my son loves that. So another example, um, you know, the only, you know, Mystic Dan, I, I always think about, you know, the, the movie, The Sting. You saw The Sting, right, Ross? No. Oh, well, well that is. You are big on 70s and 80s movies. I, I is think the it was Sting best. Sylvester Stallone? Have I seen Sylvester Stallone? No, is the Sting, is Sylvester Stallone in that or no? Robert Redford, Paul Newman, top, yeah, I think it, it might have won Best Picture of the Year 1973, but there's one scene where they go, place it all on Lucky Dan. And so they, they, they're past posting the race, so, they, 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 so he bets Lucky Dan for $500,000, and then he's talking to his friend. He's like, you got nothing to worry about. We got Lucky Dan to win. And he goes, to win? No, to place. Place it on him. He's going to finish second. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. I didn't, I didn't know that. Spoiler I alert. Spoiler alert. So, basically, if you're betting horses, it's really just for fun, and you got to go into it knowing it's a long shot. There are people who make a living betting horses. I have always firmly said if you're smart enough to win betting into that 18% track hold, even with rebates, then you're smart enough to kill it investing in sports or the stock market. That's it. And there are people that do it. Oh, ab absolutely. And some of the most um, uh, lucrative um, professional bettors over the years one big betting horses, but a big part of it is they got a 10% rebate uh, that they negotiated. Without the rebate, there are people that say they win. I, no, no one that I know is one of them. So wait a minute. What do you mean rebate? Rebate is where if you put in action, I don't have all the details, but you, 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 you bet into the, the, the paramutual pool, which has like an 18% hold, and if you bet like $100,000, they'll rebate you 10% of your action back to you. I don't know where the rebate comes from. I'm not an expert in horse racing. I'd have to like consult with some of my other people. Got it. All right. Well, let's dive into something you are an expert in, and that is betting the NFL, and in particular, the NFL schedule. All right. What is the first thing... You look for, Steve, when the NFL schedule is released, might even be Thursday night. And let me preface this, because the narrative is that the actual schedule is what's most important, and that narrative is wrong. What is most important is who you're going to play. That is the primary fundamental thing you should have already looked at, because we know who our opponents are going to be. So we already know certain facts such as, believe it or not, somehow the Bengals and the Bears both finished last in their divisions, as did the Chargers. So those teams get cupcake schedules, so they get three easy opponents, whereas their opponents don't. So that's a major advantage for Cincinnati and Chicago. We already know that. That's probably the most important information, but it's already out and reflected in the markets. What isn't reflected is four factors. Number one, international games. You don't want to play a home game in Germany or in London or in Sao Paulo or in Antarctica. So if you're going to go international, that's a negative. But it's okay if you're on the road because at least you get to play a road game in a neutral site. But um, the only exception to that rule is Jacksonville. For whatever reason, Jacksonville loves playing in London, and they're so used to that trip. I, would, I never dock Jacksonville for traveling to London. Um, other than that, home teams – Away from North America, not good. So wait a minute. It's 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 real good though for the away team, right? Well, it's it's really good that week because they don't have to a hostile environment, but you still have to travel, and that's a pain in the neck and a disruption on your season, which I dock any team for having to, to travel to Europe, etc. So I would say those two factors roughly offset. Got it. Because I mean, the fact that it's neutral site and the other team doesn't, I mean, that's got to be a couple points right there. You know, like Green Bay going to play the Eagles in Brazil instead of having to go to Philly to open the season, that's a big difference. I mean, I, how many points would you guess, Steve, 
that difference is the Eagles' home field advantage against Green Bay to open the season primetime in Philly versus Brazil. Like, what would be the home field advantage for the Eagles? Two? Yeah, exactly. Two for the Eagles. If it would have been in Green Bay, it would have been more like two and a half. Green Bay has a bigger home field edge um, as does Seattle, but two is a good number to use in general for most NFL teams. Why, um, why is it not, why did it used to always be three? And when did we change that? I think when the referees started to do a better job and not getting influenced by the crowd noise, I think there was some biased officiating, you know, I was watching an old play. Do you remember Billy White shoes Johnson before your time, right? Yes. No, he's before my time, but I've seen the highlights. So there, there was one famous Hail Mary in Atlanta, San Francisco, where White Shoes catches a Hail Mary on the eight, gets smashed on the four, falls forward, Herculean effort, and he goes down on the half-yard line, reaches the ball over the end zone. There's a five-second pause. The crowd's going crazy. The announcer screams, give it to him, and the refs do. Touchdown, Atlanta at home. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> it was not a touchdown. Oh, his entire body was down, and then he reached the ball over. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you know what else I love these days, Steve? These factor meals. How about this? How about this? I'm not even, I don't even have to do this, but I'm doing it anyway for those people watching on YouTube. These factor meals I'm showing you. My wife was eating these before they even became a sponsor. Now I have them sometimes. Mediterranean style shrimp and quinoa bowl. Absolutely delicious. Here's what I like, okay? Here's the three keys. Number one, the food tastes good. Number two, it's healthy for you. And number three, it takes two minutes. At literally two minutes. They're fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved. Two minutes. Enjoy nutritious Tasty meals. That's the key. Head to factormeals.com slash even50 and use code even50. Those of you watching on YouTube, see, I have one right here. To get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. So you're stacking discounts here, like Steve says to do when you're betting. That's code even50 at factormeals.com slash even50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Love that. Love washing it down with some delicious Labatt Blue Lights with friends, family, while I'm recording the Even Money podcast on a Tuesday morning. Always enjoy responsibly beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Okay, number one, Steve, was the international games. What's number two? Let's go rest. And friend of the show, Warren Sharp, has probably been the pioneer of this, that ideally you'd like to have more days off before a game versus your opponents. So what's horrible is when you play a bunch of opponents off their buys and they get two weeks to prepare for you. So we will analyze the schedule and look who basically got the worst of it in terms of having to face teams that have more rest than them um, and who got the best of it. This might, you might get to this, Steve, but how do we analyze it super fast? I mean, I know Warren does. Is it too late by the time Warren comes out with his data? Like, how do we get that information so that we beat everybody else? I think you got plenty of time because what happens, so the schedule gets updated. The season win numbers, they don't move initially. And then the games of the year lines come out. And invariably, the odds makers set every line for the entire season based upon power ratings. So what do I mean by that? They say, all right, Green Bay is three points or two and a half points better than an average team. And the Bears are one point better than an average team. If it was a neutral site, we'd make the line one and a half. So if the game's in Chicago, we'll make the game pick them. Boom, done. They put it up. But those initial opening odds for games of the year don't reflect the things such as a significant rest advantage for one of the teams. So you can attack these great situations by betting games of the year long after the schedule comes out. Ooh. Okay, that that makes sense. Why do you call it games of the year? 
That's just always been the term, like the poster child for that, I think, is Ohio State-Michigan game of the year. You can bet it right now, and I think the Buckeyes are laying 10 against a depleted Michigan Wolverine squad. Okay, so uh, the number one thing lesson so far is that who they're playing is still always going to be more important than when they're playing, and he can't lose sight of that. Number two, we're looking at international games, and we don't want the home team in the international game. And then number three, we're looking at the net rest advantage. So, you know, we'll have Warren on the show, you know, next few weeks here after he goes through all the data. We'll have Warren come on the show and discuss it. But essentially, you know, there's certain games where it's a really good spot for one team and a really bad spot for another team from a rest advantage standpoint. What's next, Steve? You know, let's go to week 18, last week of the season. You want to play your hardest opponent week 18. If you're Seattle, you want to play the 49ers week 18. Why? You might not have to play the 49ers. You might be able to play the spare 49ers because those teams that are the best elite teams might be resting their starters, might have everything wrapped up. So if you happen to be playing against Kansas City or San Francisco, maybe Buffalo, maybe Baltimore, you want to play those teams week 18. No lock, no guarantee that you're going to get a depleted squad but a much better chance than um, knowing to have to play them full strength weeks one through 17. So um, here's a question on that. How do you take advantage of that right away? Is that something where you, it it affects the win total or you just bet that week 18 game right away when DraftKings puts it up? Well, it impacts both. But obviously, you would like to get at it with just the Week 18 line. If they haven't adjusted for, you know, there's about a one-fourth chance that they'll be resting starters. But um, when you think about it, that's enough to me be like a three-point differential on the point spread on that game. 35 points equates to one win. So if it was a three-and-a-half-point adjustment to that line on any one game, that's worth a tenth of a win. That sounds trivial, but a tenth of a win is not trivial. That's worth like 10 cents of VIG. Wow. Okay. Um, and DraftKings, shortly after the schedule will come out, they'll probably start to have lines for every game, right? Yes. And the only week in question, sometimes the odds makers, they're a little bit worried about week 18. So sometimes they don't put lines up for the very final week of the season. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. What about weather, Steve? What about, like, you haven't said anything about weather yet? Fire and ice, exactly. Um, My favorite fade is a Southern soft team or a Southern dome team that has to go into the elements and has to play in Green Bay, in Chicago, in Buffalo in December or January. So we get the fish on the road in a cold day in the Midwest, etc. Those are exceptional spots to get down early. Um, I got to be honest. I uh, I don't even think that the the point spreads come the day of the game adequately reflect enough how much a Southern team can struggle. It's even better in the colleges. Like, I don't think I've seen the Miami Hurricanes play a good game in the elements. I mean, how many times do you have to watch, you know, the, all, all those Miami uh, players shivering on the sideline when it's 30 degrees? So that that's one of my favorite angles is to fade any team from Florida or Southern climate you know, having to go to the elements. You know, I did the uh, Falcons at the Bears week 17 last year in the snow. And I can't remember what the line was, but the Bears blew them out of the water. I mean, the Bears, the Falcons did not look like they were thrilled to be there. Arthur Smith's job was on the line. It was snowing and that whatever the line was, Steve, it wasn't enough to your point, right? And that's a great, I mean, I know it's just one game, but that's a great example right there. Um, all right, we got week 18, net rest, fire and ice. Um, what about early bird gets the worm, Steve? Yeah, just in terms of why are we betting all these games? Because we're not going to see a line we're not going to see later on. So the schedule is going to come out, and then the games of the year are going to come out. And if we see someone get screwed by the schedule, 
then we want to fire, we want to fade them typically and bet against them for season wins. Someone with a very favorable schedule, we want to bet on them. But more importantly, I love betting the games of the year, which won't reflect these these, uh, difficult scheduling spots nearly enough and get down early before everyone wakes up to the fact, oh my goodness, that's their third straight road game and, and Miami has to play in Chicago uh, you know, at, in December in that situation, things like that. Honestly, Steve, if I have learned one, well, two things on this show, and they're related, number one, for all of these, any bet anybody makes, early bird gets the worm, and just the importance of getting the best number. I mean, if you learn nothing else from this show, that would be the things I would hope people would learn. When we started to do the show, we used to tape on Wednesday, and then we moved it to Tuesday because we were missing out on too many bets. Because between early week to midweek, lines would move from three and a half to three. And that's a big part of our edge to lock in. I love me some plus three and a half. You know that, Ross, as do you. My favorite bet. Plus three and a half is my single favorite bet. That and teasers. Let's, uh, let's get some other sports in here, Steve, just since we're, you know, in the quote unquote off season. Uh, good stuff, by the way, on the NFL schedule release. That's a lot of actionable items there. What about the NBA? And, you know, obviously NBA playoffs really popular right now. What's the best way to bet the NBA? You know, I think the props are absolutely the way to go. They're not really widely available. I don't give them out much to my clients because of that. But I'm going to do a shout out. My buddy, Brad Feinberg, he's, um, he's in Philly. Philly guy. And he's just killed NBA props. And a big part of it is he gets up at, at 5 a.m. East Coast time, 2 a.m. my time. He's going through every one of them. He's like, Derek White, over three and a half assists. That's a bad number. Got to get me some of that. And that's, that's tonight's game. So that, that would be a best bet. I'd put, put me down for over three and a, over three and a half um, assists for Derek White, minus 150. But um, he bets steals. He bets blocks. So the more obscure the prop, the higher his win rate really is, while the rest of us are trying to find a winner, you know, Boston minus 12 against Cleveland, much more difficult. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it seems like for any of these things, the prop bets are usually the better way to go than the lines and the totals, that there's more of an edge there. What about, speaking of prop bets, what about Caitlin Clark and the WNBA? I know you're a big WNBA better. So you know, the WNBA, which I'm not going to actively do as much, but I always bet it every year. It's a really interesting league in that there, there are 12 teams and there's only two good, good teams. There's the elite team, the Aces in Vegas, and the New York Liberty. Both those teams going to win 75% of their games, the Aces a little bit more. And then everyone else stinks. Ah, Connecticut's pretty good. But literally, the other nine teams are 500 or worse type of teams, including the Indiana Fever, I think with the whole Caitlin Clark mania, there's going to be value betting against Indiana. So think about this. This gal's already had to play 30 games this season. And now she gets very little of a break and she's in preseason. And then she's going to have to play a regular season in the WNBA. I think ideally she gets off to a hot start and then we can fade her and fade Indiana a month into the season when she hits the wall, which I expect is likely to happen. Interesting. Um, although, I don't know, man. The NBA guys play a lot of games, but they also do, what do they call it? Rest. What do they call that? Load management. Load management, yeah. I don't know can if they play a lot of games anymore, Ross. They, they Jordan used to. <laughs> can you imagine if, if that ever happened in the NFL? like load management, and they had a running back sit out week 12 or a quarterback or somebody, that would be incredible. Lamar Jackson, I've got a tummy ache again. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pass on the Bengal game. We'll still make the playoffs. It's fine. you got to check this man out on social media, at Fezzik Sports. He is fantastic. Love those of you that watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. As always, It's awesome if you go ahead and rate and review the show. You rate and review the show or take advantage of any sponsors, your email question goes to the top of the list, and we're going to get to a lot of email questions 
over the coming weeks. So make sure you do that. Ross at RossTucker.com. Other than that, good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for tuning in to Even Money. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform.